So Crystal's up here on the right-hand side. Oh, gentlemen, let the ladies first, please. All right, you guys can get your binders out. Make sure you're filling in your learning target and your homework for today. When you're done with that, grab a pen that's not black, and your answers for from last night's homework are up here. You only did 1 through 15, so don't worry about those. Okay. All right, about one more minute to correct your homework from last night. All right, so you are correcting on your paper with pen if you got any one of these incorrect from last night. Okay, so um, number seven, number seven, you should have taken 500 miles divided by 6.7 hours. Who asked for number seven? Did that, is that what you did, Ben? Okay, so you needed help with the division part? Okay, so 500 divided by 6.7, okay? All right, we're going to practice teach okay. I want you to tell your neighbor, ones are going to tell twos, what is the first step you need to do before you can start doing this division problem? First step, you don't start until I say, ready? Teach. Okay. Switch. Finger woo to Nick. Woo! Okay, Nick had some really cool hand movements. He was like, You have to take the decimal, you have to move it over here. And he got really into it, so nice job, Nick. Uh, Nick, can you tell me exactly what you were saying, though? I was saying um, you have to turn 6.7 into a whole number, so you would have to move uh, the decimal uh, before the 7 or after. After, yeah? And then you would put a decimal zero, uh, 500. And then move it over once. Move it over once here. And then put a zero. Okay. Awesome. Do we agree? Yes. Okay. So now you have 67 goes into 5,000. Okay. So can 67 go into 5? No. Heck no. Remember? Can 67 go into 50? No. Heck no. All right. Can 67 go into 500? Yes. 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 But now we have to know how many times. Oh, I know, that's the hard part. Javier? Seven. Seven? Let's try seven. Sixty-seven times seven. Let's see. Third, uh, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Is that what you got? Yeah. Javier messed up and, and Fabian said it's cool. Ten finger woo to Fabian. Woo! woo. All right, 469. So, subtract. I can't take from here, so I have to borrow 10 and borrow. And this guy becomes a 10, so I'm left with 1, 3, bring down the 0. Now I have to do, oops, I didn't put my 7 here. My bad. It's all darn. All right, 67 goes into 310. What do you think? 5? Yeah. Everett's saying 4. Yeah. Ollie's saying 4? 4? Four? All right, let's try four. 67 times four, seven times four is 28. Carry the two, 24, 25, 26. Do 68, yep. Subtract there. And I have to borrow, makes that a 10. Borrow again, four. Uh-oh, what do I do now? Okay, twos, I want you to tell ones what I'm supposed to do. And ready? Teach. Okay. <laughs> Switch. Switch. Class, class. Yes, yes. Three times two. Three times two is six. Jade, tell me what you were telling Garrett. Um, quick. A decimal after the last zero. And Oops, here. And put a zero after it. What do we call that zero? That zero has a special name. Placeholder. Placeholder. Ten finger woo to Jade. Woo! Okay. So 
I bring this guy down and I put my zero here, okay? Now I have to do 67 into 420. All right, let's move on to note notebooks. Close up your spirals and get your note notebooks out. All right, uh, so today the lesson objective, which is also your learning target for today, find equivalent ratios and identify proportions. Okay, so I want ones to tell twos what your learning target is in a very secretive voice. Okay, ready? Teach. Okay. Class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. Now I want twos to tell ones what the learning target is with very big hand motions and act like you're really excited about learning this. Ready? Teach. Okay. Class, class. Yes, yes. Give your neighbor a high five. Okay. Here we go. All right. Equivalent ratios. Everyone say yes. Yes. You're so excited about equivalent ratios. Ratios that name the same comparison. Ratios that name the same comparison. Okay, Martin, you got to get to our page, honey. Start filling it out. <laughs> Perfect. So close it up if you've got these two. Okay, and then we're going to talk about the word proportion. An equation stating that two ratios are equivalent. An equation, oops. Stating that two ratios... are equivalent. All right, so as you're finishing that definition there, let's do mirror. Mirror. Mirror words. Mirror words. Ratios. Ratios. That name. That name. The same. The same. Comparison. Comparison. Okay, I want ones to teach twos. Okay, I want ones, ones to teach twos. The definition for. Equivalent ratios. Teach. Class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. Mirror. Mirror. Mirror words. Mirror words. Proportion. Proportion. An equation. Stating, Stating that two, that two ratios, ratios are equivalent. Are equivalent. Twos, are Twos are gonna teach ones. The definition, the definition for, proportion. for proportion. Teach. Okay. Did you guys already teach Everett and Hunter? Did you teach already? Okay. Class! Yes! Class, class. Yes, yes! Okay. Give your neighbor a high five if they gave you a really good definition. All right. Why three fifths and six tenths are equivalent. Ready? Teach! Okay! Careful. Careful. 
Be careful. Class, class. Yes, yes. Class, class, class. Yes, yes, yes. Class, class. Yes, yes. Okay. That was some good class guesses. I'll give you one point. Can't celebrate until I say go. Ready? Go. Oh, yeah. Nice job. All right. So, can somebody tell me their amazing explanation that their partner told them about why those two fractions are equivalent? Lena, I want to hear. Because, like, you're just pretty much multiplying onto it, and, like, when you take it away, it's pretty much just going to be the same thing. Multiplying onto it. Oh, when you reduce back to, when you reduce again. Well, Is that what you mean? Like, when you times it by two, it just keeps adding on. But then, like, when you take it away, and when you take away that two, then it just ends up back to three. Points. Right. So I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lena, I think Lena's saying you can keep multiplying by any number you want, but then when you reduce 6 tenths or reduce any other equivalent fraction, you're going to come back to 3 fifths every time. Is that what you were saying? Okay. Great. Ten finger woo to Lena. Woo! So I want you to keep working on your own. For a few more minutes, we've got about six minutes until the end of the period. Yeah. So we can use two numbers? Because I was thinking how you did two and three. You can use two different numbers but you have to use the same number on top and bottom on one fraction. Yeah? Make sure you're doing columns, Billy. Got to do columns. Yeah? Okay, so you're just reducing. So can you reduce 3 fourths and 5 sixths? No, you can't. So instead of reducing, here, open your note notebook. Instead of reducing, you're going to go up and multiply. Here it is. So here, so you can't divide, so you're going to do this, this one instead. So you're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by any number. So pick, pick any number to multiply both of those by. Okay. And what do you get? 9 over? Okay. Okay. And how can you get 12 on the, in the denominator for this one? Divide how would you do number nine? Would you just no, write not it divide, would multiply like another number, like Seven. it equals? Would yeah. you write like just equal or proportional to? You can just write equals because that is this here. Let's see, this is a proportion when you have two that are equal. Good, ten over twelve, and nine over twelve does not equal ten over twelve, so they're not proportional. All right, you're doing it right. If for number seven you got not proportional, we did really great today. Give yourself a round of applause. Okay.